Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in Washington, D.C. at the Women's Heart Health Congressional Day. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Roxana Moran, who is a professor of medicine and director of interventional cardiovascular research and clinical trials at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City, New York. Dr. Moran, thanks so much for being with me today. It's lovely to be here with you. Thank you, Adam. We're here in Washington, D.C. at this incredible event. For the patients out there, can you explain what are we doing here and what should they know about it? Well, I think it's historic. I mean, if you think about it, uh, I don't remember that we would have a whole day dedicated to women's heart health um, on the Hill. And here we are talking uh, to our representatives from around the country about the importance and the very, very crucial time point that we're in. We're at an inflection point of saving lives, saving women's lives. Dr. Moran, what are the fundamental challenges for women with heart disease? Well, it's a huge challenge. Uh, women aren't believed. Uh, they come in with symptoms that are really serious and they're ignored. Heart disease is uh, the number one killer, yet awareness that heart disease is the number one killer has decreased over the last couple of decades. We're losing lives every few seconds, and we're starting to see, especially in young women, younger women, higher death rates. We have to put a stop to that, and I think this is why we're here. Yeah, and so let's talk about this a little further. I have heard that there is and read some studies that there's an issue with underdiagnosis, undertreatment, and underrepresentation in things like clinical trials. Is that accurate? And if so, what should the patients take away from the learnings you have? Well, it's totally accurate when they come in with a heart attack or symptoms of a heart attack. They're often underrecognized. They're often pushed aside. They tell them, you're fine, go home. On the clinical trial side, almost every device and every um, drug that's out there has really been studied in white men. So do we have answers for women? Do these results that we are using our guidelines and how clinicians are making decisions relate to women? Many don't. Is it true that about 35% of women who are indicated for surgery because of aortic stenosis don't get an aortic valve replacement? Yeah, I mean, Aortic stenosis is a disease that's prevalent in women, yet the diagnosis is not well done. And then, of course, for aortic stenosis, when there is a diagnosis, they wait longer to then be referred for the definitive therapy, which is an aortic valve replacement, whether it's going to be surgery or an approach without needing surgery, a minimally invasive approach with what we call TAVR. But these are the big questions that women should be asking their doctors. For the women out there, does heart valve disease impact women differently than men? Absolutely. Women are not small men. We, we keep hearing this and I keep saying that. Um, the pathology or the way our valves are getting blocked is very different than the way men's valves get blocked. We know that. There are important sex differences. There's less calcifications, the way the heart responds to the a blocked valve is different than in men. And so we have to look at them in, as their distinct, their own uh, biology and understand how to treat them. Dr. Moran, what is the SMART clinical trial and how does it relate to today's event? The SMART clinical trial is a pivotal trial that uh, we're very, very proud of. For the very first time for aortic stenosis, which is the blocked aortic valve, uh, we looked at a small annulus, a condition that's more prevalent in women. And as a result, for the first time ever, we enrolled almost 90% women, and we now have an answer for our women who have aortic stenosis with a small annulus, which valve they probably should get. What were the key findings of the SMART trial? We showed that the self-expanding valve, the Evolute valve, had very similar clinical outcomes with the balloon expandable Sapien valve, but a very important difference is in how patients felt. They felt better with the Evolute valve. As we followed these patients with the ultrasound, it looked like their valve was more open, more functional, 
and better in terms of how much blood was getting to the rest of their body. And in that way, it is a very important finding that I think over time is going to show an important difference in the clinical outcome. So that's what we're excited about. What can the patients in our community do mm -hmm. to improve women's heart health? Well, they should know that if you have aortic stenosis, you can ask your doctor, is my heart valve small? That's a question that no one ever would know, except the patients should know. The annulus, is it small? And if it is, then which valve are you gonna put in? Is it the one that opens by itself or is it the one that opens with a balloon? Well, Dr. Moran, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks to you and everything that you and your team are doing for patients with aortic stenosis and all heart valve patients. Well, Thanks thank for being you. with me today. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for what you're doing and informing patients because they have the right to know. Thank you.